Why is my precious rocket ship drifting off into deep space? Why am I reaching you at the coordinates of the abandoned space station? Why? 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 Hello! Plague Vault Carver here with a new episode of RBY Bites. When a new player joins the RBY community, one of their first questions is why dig and fly band? And well, it makes sense. These moves are generally quite innocuous. In game, you use them for fast travel, and they can even be important attacking moves for your team. However, these moves have a pretty brutal glitch that makes them among the most broken moves in the entire franchise. You see, if you're interrupted by full paralysis after the move has begun, you just kind of stay there? Your Pokémon is still underground or in the air, but they can still attack. This state cannot be exited until the Pokémon uses and completes Dig or Fly again, but you're basically invincible, so why would you want to? Thus the name, Semi-Invulnerability Glitch. Contrary to popular belief, Confusion does not trigger the Semi-Invulnerability Glitch. In fact, it has no effect. As a result, you can only trigger the Semi-Invulnerability Glitch through Paralysis. And in this case, it is still a very big problem because... Paralysis is the focal point of this metagame, while Confusion is usually taking a significant backseat. Not many people use that strategy. The only form of counterplay is Swift or Bide, the only moves in the game that completely bypass accuracy checks. This means they can even hit Pokémon during Dig or Fly's semi invulnerable state. Unfortunately, these moves are terrible otherwise, so they don't really move the needle on whether or not Dig or Fly are broken. Given how common Paralysis is in the Gen 1 OU metagame, this game state will occur eventually, and it may not even be on purpose. Remember, Body Slam is very common, so Pokemon like Articuno that may like switch in on it to take on Taurus could probably just have it happen. So, now you're invincible. You can simply set up and sweep the opposing team with zero viable counterplay besides a desperate attempt to PP stall the Pokemon until they must reuse Dig or Fly. This is a really, really, really brainless strategy. For example, it encourages switching your Zapdos in on a Thunder Wave and then just sweeping completely unimpeded unless you somehow force it to use Fly again. Remember, there's no team preview, so your opponent could just have Fly Zapdos, or you could defuse that bomb and, surprise, you just got wiped by a Fly Dragonite and four of his best friends. Or you could never use Paralysis and just get steamrolled by Tauros and co. You know, that happens. We've all been tilted by Paralysis, but punishing it with a 6-0 is extremely unhealthy, whether viable or not. Now, it is unfortunate that the moves are the way they are, because they have a legitimate use. Fly is the only available flying stamp for many Pokémon. Articuno, Moltres, Aerodactyl, Charizard, Dragonite, and Pidgeot are all Pokémon that crucially lack Drill Pack and thus only have Fly as a passable option. Dig is decent ground coverage too, with Pokémon like Arcanine, Ninetales, Parasect, and Primeape all lacking Earthquake and looking to Dig for a budget option. Many players that defend Dig and Fly bemoan this situation, which then brings us to their next point. These players claim you could theoretically enforce a mid-battle restriction where, if the semi-vulnerability glitch occurs, the Invincible Pokémon must either switch or attempt to use Dig or Fly again. This would theoretically just extend the semi-vulnerability duration and allow the attack to progress as normal. This does look like it resolves the issue on the surface, but there are some issues with it, which have led to Dig and Fly never being unbanned. You see, this is a very powerful form of PP stall in and of itself. Starting Dig and Fly does not use power points, and you can still farm many invulnerable turns through repeated full paralysis. This leads to a very, very one-sided interaction between an opposing Pokémon trying to out the semi invulnerable Pokémon, just awkwardly waiting for the situation to resolve itself, only for them to continue spamming the move. The fact process quarter speed can also help the invincible Pokemon, as opponents can't often even catch it on the turn it returns from using Dig or Fly. While yes, the Pokemon can experience full process multiple times before using Dig or Fly, while eventually fainting, it can also stay in the air in the same manner. Players fighting invincible Pokemon could also switch around to prevent PP loss, but this could reveal information about a team that may or may not be saved for later, and the player still doesn't know when the invulnerable situation will actually end. More straightforwardly, the player with the semi vulnerable Pokémon can still just swap out after the glitch has tri be triggered if they find it being PV stalled or being met with this mythical buy counterplay. Anyway, enough rambling. The core issue is that this awkward situation is way more trouble than it's worth. 
This is a two-player game, and you shouldn't have to watch a player do the equivalent of falling in the mud of a door to a fancy party and trying to wipe it off. Dig and fly aren't even good for their intended purpose, given the inherent downsides to moves that take a turn to even, like, you know, do their thing. Remember, the opponent can always just switch out, so your Aerodactyl probably isn't even connecting Fly against the Executor. Plus, Fly has a measly 70 base power here, and imperfect accuracy, so even if it is somehow poised to nail the right Pokémon, whether it actually hits is another ball game. Similar things can be said about Dig. While its base power is equivalent to Earthquake and thus very strong, it's also a free entry for Zapdos. These moves are very flawed, and the Pokémon that do want these moves wouldn't benefit much from them either. They're either perfectly fine on their own, or already lost causes. This brings us back to the simple solution that has been upheld for a very long time. Dig and Fly are banned, placed in the same category as what hit KO moves, evasion, and other unscrupulous parts of the game that Smogon keeps banned to reduce variance. No solution proposed has ever proven viable, with many players believing that they often do more harm than good. Thus, ever since Pokemon Showdown started tiering the games more accurately, the moves have, well, just been banned. However, there is a silver lining. The stadium titles did indeed fix Dig and Fly, making them viable formats for players to use the moves in. In fact, Stadium OU recently had an open tournament conclude, with a fan favourite player named Seatown6 taking the whole event. With the format seeing some strides in metagame development, maybe you'll be the one to optimise these moves. Why not join the Arboy Discord to find out? This was Plague on Karma, and I'll see you all next time.